सभी साधकों का सुबह के ध्यान सत्र में हार्दिक स्वागत है चित्त सहस्त्र आर पे रख के सामूहिक बंधन लेते हैं ध्यान की शुरुआत तीन महामंत्र तत्पश्चात श्री गणेश मंत्र से करते हैं
परम पूज्य श्री माता जी कृपावंत होकर आप हमारे सहस्रार पर विराजी है श्री माता जी कृपा कर हमारा आत्म साक्षात्कार दृढ़ कीजिए श्री माता जी हम सब अपना अहंकार और प्रति अहंकार आपके श्री चरणों पर समर्पित करते हैं कृपावंत होकर आप हमें निर्विचारिता प्रदान कीजिए जय श्री माता जी इसी ध्यान की अवस्था में अमृतवाणी ग्रहण करते हैं आई एम इमेंसली joyous to see all of you here i do not know what to say from my side the words get lost they have no meaning so many of you aspiring to ascend to that state where you would have complete joy bliss and peace this is what i could give you and a mother is only happy when she can give whatever she has to her children her unhappiness all her restlessness everything is just to achieve that end to gift all that she has 
I don't know how much to thank you people to go through all this, to get to that treasure that you have within yourself. <coughs> Sahaj is the only word I could think when I started uh, to manifest Sahastra opening. That's easily understood by everyone so far. But you have realized that it is today a different style of yoga where first enlightenment is given and then you are allowed to look after yourself. It was never done before. It's just a venture of your mother which has worked out. <coughs> Otherwise, in the olden time, In the olden times, the system of it's rather too close. I don't know. Am I all right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's adjustment. All right. It's all right. It's better. So, in the olden times, of course, the <coughs> concern of the Divine was to get people enlightened. And he did not know how to work it out. No incarnation ever tried to work it out in this fashion. But whenever they tried, they tried to have a very severe hardship for the seekers, very severe hardships. I wonder how many of you have read uh, the treatise of Buddha, when he used to travel with thousands of his disciples, not giving realization. They were not realized souls without feeling any joy around with two clothes, living in the jungles, just two clothes. And the area where he visited, which I have seen myself, is terribly cold, chilly, absolutely chilly. And the clothes were not clothes actually, it was cloth covering their body, sleeping on the open ground. in very severe winter or maybe the summer. Without any shoes they were asked to walk for miles together, miles together. If you go and see where Buddha has walked and trodden, you'll be surprised. Buddha was also young, he used to also walk, but his disciples used to walk much more because he would go and station in a place, he would send his disciples, there was no time, uh, to advertise or to announce anything. So the, he used to stay in one place and the disciple used to go round the villages, ask for bhiksha, meaning the arms, to gather some food from villages, cook one times, give part of it to Buddha and the rest of that they used to eat. They would go, work out, get people from all the villages, whatever was possible, and would bring them to Buddha for a sermon. Such sacrifices. They have lived in huts, caves, in terrible darkness, meditating, but they never got realization. Very few got their realization. They were people who were sons of great princes and prince, dukes, what you call, duchess as you call, 
all very, very rich people. Women of very rich families, swallowed in, and they walked for miles together with him in the thorny roots because they felt that Buddha's work was of such universal importance that they are the part and parcel of such a tremendous task that they should be taking part in such a great work for humanity. This is not only in India, but even Viditama, who started the Zen system in Japan. In China I was surprised the amount of sacrifices the saints had made, the way they lived. I mean, if you see the way they were living in the conditions, you cannot imagine. And they ended up their lives like that, working it out without any proper guidance because Buddha had died. There was no way out. They had to find their own ways. Then they found Mahayana, Shvetayan, all kinds of things. Even if you see other seekers in other religions, like at the time of Christ, where did they live? And after the death of Christ it was even worse because they persecuted, were killed, they were tortured crucified. It happened with Moses also. His disciples were hounded, so they had to all run towards India. Imagine the distances from that area to Kashmir, how they must have walked, how they must have lived, how they must have carried on. And in thousands, in thousands they came to India, because they realized that they are doing a tremendous task, something so great that they are supporting. In this country we had a struggle of freedom. I was part and parcel of that. My parents were part and parcel of that. They were rich people, quite rich, I should say, from every standard. You'll be amazed, my father burnt all his suits, they were stitched in England. My mother burnt all her saris. They used to spin their own clothes and wear them. My father sacrificed everything, every pie that he had for the freedom struggle. He left nothing for us, not a single, I should say, of course, our family being rich, we had silver and gold and all that, that's, but as far as all the cash money was concerned, was spent. And all this silver and gold also thanks to English that they took away from us and they returned us when they went back. That's how we had some silver and gold left in the family. Everything, all that is material was snatched away. And I know we lived in beautiful houses and then we shifted to huts and lived there. Sacrifices to the maximum. I was very happy about it, very proud. We had only two changes, just to wash our clothes, live like very poor people, sleeping on this kind of a thing. For my life, I remember that I never used to take a pillow. I never used chappals for ages. I had only one sweater made out of this kind of material till I passed out and went to medical college. I had that sweater with me. I had only one coat throughout my education. When I was in Lahore, which is terribly cold, sometimes can be like London, which was burned out and finished. But we never grudged and never grumbled and never said that our father should have looked after us and done something. Why did he just sacrifice everything for the country? Never, never, never. But even today, when they see us anywhere, they know we are the children of such a 
great man. They have tremendous respect for us. That quality was created, I should say, by Mahatma Gandhi. He made everybody so transformed into a new personality of tremendous sacrifices, tremendous. You cannot imagine how people lived. All the money that we had, everything that we had, all conveniences, conveniences, all housing, everything was given up, not only by my father, but so many of them. Otherwise we could not have got our freedom. To get our freedom this country has sacrificed so much. Now after that we are here to get our freedom, to get the freedom for our spirit, to make our spirit free from our greed, lust, from your anger, for from our conditionings, from our terrible ego, from the body being enslaved by comfort, I must say Gandhiji had a special charm. I don't know how he managed. He was like touch of Midas, touched anybody, he became transformed. And he was an extremely strict man, very kind to me, to children, but he was an extreme, extremely strict man. He would not tolerate any nonsense at all. Throughout, if you study the way all these people were brought up, not only for freedom of or independence, but even before that for spiritual life, anywhere, this one thing very common is sacrifice. And the consciousness that you are doing something right, consciousness that you are part and parcel of the whole, such a big thing, such a big work, such a noble cause. And then there was one thing very common, very common among all of them, that the noble cause the upliftment of the noble cause made them sacrifice in such a Sahaja manner, much more than the Sahaja yogis sometimes who have got so much in Sahaja Yoga. They have got their joy, they have got their spirit. I have seen it with my own eyes, such people in this country whom you may call legendary, but I have seen it. Thousands of people were killed and butchered, children died, Nobody shed tears. Nobody shed tears. But to feel that you are for a, such a noble cause itself gives you that joy, joy and that sense of involvement. And moreover, what I know about Mahatma Gandhi and other people, what I have seen, how they were, everybody was not allowed to come. And anybody who did even slightest thing less than, whether he was a king's son or he was anybody's daughter or anything, any little thing they spoiled, anything, he was chucked. I have stayed in Gandhi's ashram, so I know what it is, and that's how you know I can go through rigorous life. It is his state. All the children, about twelve years, had to clean the whole of that ashram area, which is in up to fifty acres of land, every morning. They had to ke clean their latrines. Also, the latrines of the guests, we are, I have cleaned. 
and they were allowed only two dresses. And nothing could be kept, even you cannot see one paper anywhere, any litter anywhere, so clean, spick and span. And their living places were so neat and tidy. It was all done with cow dung, completely with cow dung. Everybody had to take a bath early in the morning at four o'clock with cold water. Whether it was Jawaharlal Nehru or Abul Kalam Azad, my father of any age group or a child. And five o'clock Mahatma Gandhi was there for his lecture. Please don't raise your hands and raise your Kundalini. Please be seated. That's not the way. Try to understand what I'm talking. And then the early in the morning at four o'clock, you'll be surprised getting up. For me it was all right. And then to walk in those fifty acres of land to the center of that hall, which was nothing but just an open space surrounded by some sort of huts where Gandhiji was living, to walk all the way after bath, after getting ready and all that, and snakes used to crawl along. Nobody was bitten, of course. I think the snakes understood that people were busy with the great job of free, freeing this great country. And we would sit just like this and snakes would be crawling. No lights were allowed, no lights of any kind. We only used sunlight. And when Gandhiji would come, I mean sunlight was not there in the morning at all, some lanterns were brought to put there and we would see the snakes crawling up. But I never heard anybody complaining, but like a war drove with such passion, everybody competing as to what I can do, how I can be all right. Nobody even thought of comfort. Of course they were all about, say, in fifty, up to fifty years of age or something like that, maybe. In the ashram, mostly the people were about up to fifty years of age, that time. And I have seen with my own eyes the people who had huge cars in the house and things like that, they sold off, they threw it away. They used to come by train to Vardha station and walk down. Gandhiji would not see anybody coming even in a tongue. And they listened to him and obeyed him. I have seen many missionaries, though they are not up to the point, nothing very noble, but the way that's how they take people to task and people work it out for them. I have seen that. In India we had missionaries and uh, younger people who came from abroad, they just absolutely obediently listened to the missionaries and did whatever they said. Now today we are doing, as you know, the greatest of greatest work because freedom, independence of freedom or freedom is of course necessary political freedom to talk even about God. We could not even make a small little needle at that time, we were not allowed by the government, so much oppressed. So we had to get out of the shackles of uh, slavery, no doubt. But now I find we have another kind of slavery, a slavery of selfishness, self-oriented. This is my comfort, I must have this, it should be enjoyable. I'm enjoying, I'm this, I'm that. You should enjoy, otherwise it is not something great. 
I mean the whole thing should provide you some sort of a uh, feeling instead of you providing the feeling. Because people, I think, do not know what they are doing, what sort of a work they are doing. They do not want to come up to that level of that height to see what are you up to. You are trying to save the whole world. This is one of the reasons Sahaja Yoga moves so slowly, because they see people who, worry, who are worried about their comforts, this, that, and also themselves are so lousy. There's no smartness about them, no feeling of that greatness that they have to do. You have to be smart. If you know you are on the wall, how you behave? I am sure the mediocracy is much less now, better people. I am sure we will get even better people now, much better people. They worry about little, little things of their families, this, that. They worry about their own problems and their jobs and this and that. I mean, nobody could talk like this to Gandhiji. I tell you, he would have slapped. Take it from me. It is as if to come to Sahaja Yoga means solve your own problems, that's all. Though you are, it's their fault, no doubt, you are helped, God helps you so much. But how much are you doing about it? Of course, we have some very great Sahaja Yogis, I would not deny that fact. We have some, much more than I had ever, and that's why I'm very joyous about it. But the dedication we have, we count every penny that we spend, how much we've got out of that penny, what did we do about it? This is not the way. Buddha never sent, spent a single penny of his own. He got money from all his disciples, built all these big things and all that. He never had even a public uh, help from anybody else. So rise now. You must rise above your petty, small mind. Rise up to the point where you should know you are going to save the whole humanity. If you cannot feel that, it's better to leave Sahaja Yoga. Sahaja Yoga is not meant for people who are lousy. In Marathi the word is gabare. Tukarama has said, Eriya gabareyatse kamano ve. It is not the work of the lousy. Shivaji himself, when he fought his war, he caught hold of people, the Sardaras and the dupes of that time. That he, they, they gave up everything that they had. They gave up their lives, everything. Their children they sacrificed. They sacrificed whatever they had. Shivaji had no money to pay them. You must have heard of lots of stories about Shivaji. While if you see how we Sahajogis are in this world, Kshema comes first before yoga. It's like that. It's your mother's love. I want my children to be comfortable. They are newly born babes. All right, they need comfort. They are to be looked after. But I cannot blackmail the Divine because the children are small, can I? I'm here to do the job of God Almighty. And when you are my children, all right, His grace will work, He'll look after you, He'll make you grow. But grow now, grow, you have to grow. Get out of this small nonsense that you are. See your personality, how you live. Where, do, where is your attention? What do you think? Are you thinking about Sahaja Yoga, that it is the most important thing for which you are chosen?
I feel sometimes, as I was feeling all the time, that you might be uncomfortable in many places. But I myself have seen the way you people have been in those places most carelessly. The Western Asar yogis were surprised that we Indians are better in this respect. And some of the Indian Sahaja Yogis have been misbehaving in a very funny manner. It shocked me the way they have been behaving, shouting at people, creating problems. Some people come to see Me, they talk to them in such a rude manner that they run away. You can talk to them sweetly. You have to be nice to them, not to shout at people. All right, I cannot meet everyone at every time, at every convenience, all right. But that doesn't mean you have a right to shout at others. This is so petty and so low that I don't know how far I have to come down. When you rise above all these petty things, you will develop, develop that divine discretion. That divine discretion, uh, discretion is the real blessing of God. All other blessings that you think is a blessing is no blessing at all. Unless and until you can grow, what is the blessing? Like a tree which says, Oh, such a blessing that I have got rain. But out of that rain, if you cannot grow, what is the use of having that rain on you? You have to be compassionate, beautiful, sensible people who are highest beings on this earth. Take out your attention from all nonsense that you have been busy with. That's how you get possessed. That's how you get con conditioned. Small, small things you see. In India we have another problem. We cannot tolerate another person. If any person is doing good for Sahaja Yoga, immediately a group is built up. It's very common with Indians also. A group is built up, put him down. This was not done when Gandhiji was there. I don't know how it happens. It only d happens with poor leadership. I think I, do, I, I don't have that leadership. At the time of Gandhiji, he used to blast people out completely cutting each other's throat and saying things behind, back, behind, forming groups. Anybody who works out something nice and I try to help that person to express himself, immediately a group comes up to And there are some hopelessly peripheral, useless Sahaja Yogis in the West and in the East who try to make a mess of things. They think they are big gurus, big people, very small people, chicken-hearted, I should say. And they think they are very big, uh, great people because they can take good photographs maybe or that they can wear a dress in a particular manner or something like that, stupid stuff as they are, and try to dominate others. Such people will be thrown out, absolutely. No use having useless people in a machine like this. Today is the beginning of a new era, of a new era of people of very high qualities whose spirit has been enlightened. Let's all think about it. Now you have to rule yourself and you have to rule others through compassion, love and discretion. Today that's the big time that I have declared that it is the universal religion, the Nirmala religion which is formed out of My teachings of love. But it doesn't mean by any chance that you remain dwarfs. I am not going to spoil I am not going to spoil you by keeping you dwarfy people. So try to rise. Do not dominate each other. 
respect respect each other you are out for a very big work of your art how much you know about the divine nobody has known so far but fix up yourself i have known of a very great saint called gagangar maharaj who's fallen down complete if person like him can fall down you also can fall down if you do not understand what is your worth what is your value and what is the position you are given so we have to today with all our love for our mother have to decide in our heart that we are going to have large heartedness of sacrifices what have we sacrificed so far just think of it have we did we sacrifice anything please try to understand that i have to use you the great souls to save the humanity you must grow you must grow you have to grow on money points also people are so rich they make money they save money in america i was surprised the way people cheated me of money thousands in india also there is this is a very common practice then if you have career mindedness and you are very ambitious how my job will remain this that you better get out of surgery is not going to help us at all thirdly there are people who believe that uh, this is my wife this is my beloved this is this and all that nonsense why are you here for what or my children my household my mother my father all sorts of wretched people around if you cannot rise above them you cannot help me i'm sorry you cannot help me. you have to be very very strong people you have to be people of very great valor and great idealism and noble ideas some are like petty shopkeepers who follow uh, the platoons to sell some things around in marathi is called bazar bunge so now you meditate upon this point that here we are to establish the universal religion of ascent it's a tremendous task if i could do it alone i would have done it but i cannot it's only through you i have to do it and you have a heritage you come from a very great but where you have the heritage with that heritage if i cannot manage you i think i better give up your leadership i cannot do it when we were fighting for our freedom all of us were removed from schools because we were in the missionary school and the missionaries believed that Christ was born in England so they would not allow us to study in those schools so we were all removed from schools we had no education for some time i couldn't pass my uh, inter science for two years i couldn't appear because they restricted us from colleges and schools 
the government was ticketed us. But we were such proud children, very proud. I was, of course, very much thick in it. I was never frightened. I was just an eighteen-year-old girl. And I remember one day some people came and told us that your father is transferred from this jail to another jail. They had such pride for us, all the people. So they had brought cars to take us down. And there were so many there. And Mother naturally was worried because I was a young girl. The police used to torture me, used to give me shock and make me my life very miserable, beat me and all that. So she was crying and she told an old gentleman who was there that, I'm worried about my daughter, she, she, I don't want her to be tortured anymore. So I went and smiled at him. So he said, no, you just don't stop it now, you just don't do it, it's not proper. So my father you see, took me aside, he said, don't listen to this old Johnny, he's now about to die, forget him. I would like all my children to be sacrificed on the altar of freedom. If you are doing it, I'm a doing it, I'm a proud mother and I'll tell your mother to behave herself. I'm so proud of you." Such atmosphere I have passed through. I had to give up my college. I was absconding for eight months, the police was after my life. I know what we have gone through, we were very young people. Eighteen years, you can imagine. And now when you have got the freedom of your spirit, you must seek the comfort of your spirit. There are some people who are complainers and this and that nonsense. They should not have come. Or those who are Indians, they should get out of Sahaja Yoga and leave us alone. But those who know that they have come here, not to enjoy themselves only, but to make the whole world enjoy what you have got, to give it to them, and for that one has to sacrifice. One has to bear the pangs. How much I bear your pangs when you are caught up, when you are troubles, when this and that. I have got blisters sometimes from you, everything. But I don't mind because it is my life, my mission, my existence, my everything is for the purpose of emancipation of humanity. Even the last drop of my blood is for that. So my satisfactions are very different. Please remember you are born of a very brave mother. Please. Try to rise. Be proud that you are doing such tremendous stuff.
जय श्री माता जी अपना चित्त सहस्रार पे रख के प्रार्थना अर्पित करते हैं परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आज का ध्यान हम सब आपके श्री चरणों पर समर्पित करते हैं श्री माता जी आपने हमें आत्म साक्षात कर दिया परम चैतन्य से आशीर्वादित किया हमारा चित्त सहस्रार में स्थित किया इन सब के लिए हम हृदय से आपके ऋणी है आभारी है श्री माता जी आपकी कृपा में हम हमारा अहंकार और प्रति अहंकार आपके श्री चरणों में समर्पित करते हैं श्री माता जी आप ही कर्ता कर्विता और भोक्ता है हम तो केवल निमित्त मात्र है श्री माता जी कृपा कर आप हमारे अंदर आध्यात्मिक परिवर्तन घटित कीजिए हमें स्वयं की पहचान दीजिए श्री माता जी कृपा कर आप हमें निर्विकल्प स्थिति प्रदान कीजिए हमारा उत्थान निर्विकल्प स्थिति में कीजिए श्री माता जी कृपा कर आप हमें विश्व निर्मल धर्म में प्रस्तापित कीजिए श्री माता जी हमारे सारे प्रार्थनाओं को स्वीकार कीजिए और हमें आशीर्वादित करने की कृपा कीजिए परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आपके श्री चरणों पर हमारा कोटि कोटि नमन कोटि कोटि नमन अनंत कोटि नमन जय श्री माता जी सामूहिक बंधन लेते हैं आज का ध्यान सत्र यहीं पे संपन्न होता है जय श्री माता जी